In this lecture, we shall understand the term argument of a complex number and we shall also learn how to find the argument of a complex number. Let z equal to a plus ib be the complex number. Let us represent this in the argon plane first. So, here are two perpendicular axes and we call the horizontal as the real axis and the vertical as the imaginary axis and of course, this is the origin O. Let point P represent the complex number A plus IB. So, we call this as A comma B. Now, let us draw the radius vector. What is the radius vector? It is the line joining the origin to the point P. Also, draw a perpendicular from P to the real axis. And let us name this point as A and also see that OA is equal to the length A and PA is equal to B and we represent the radius vector by the letter R. Now, we are ready to define the argument of a complex number. Now, what is the argument? It is the angle made by this radius vector R with the real axis in the positive direction. Now, the positive direction it is the anti-clockwise if you draw that will become the positive direction. So, this is the positive sense. Therefore, this angle theta is the argument of this complex number z equal to a plus ib and it is represented as argument a r g. a r g of z is theta and the other name is amplitude. Amplitude or argument it means the same. So, we can also call this as amplitude a m p of z, but so there is a clause here, but what is that but? You see, if theta is the value of the argument, we can say 2 n pi plus theta are also the values of this argument, right? And where, what, what is this n? n is the set of integers, n belongs to the set of integers. So, whenever theta is the argument, we have so many arguments here, values of these arguments, and they are infinite. But, we cannot call each one of them as the required argument. What we want is a principal argument. So, what is principal argument? The principal argument is the value of theta, principal argument is the value of theta which satisfies the inequality negative pi less than theta less than or equal to pi. So, whenever the theta which satisfies this inequality only that is considered to be the principal argument and by argument we mean principal argument we are considering only the principal argument. So, whenever you have to find the argument, we have to find the principal argument which satisfies this condition principle, this is C. Okay? So, now we have found a complex number which lies in the first quadrant. So, in case it lies in the first quadrant, the argument is theta. Now, how to find this theta? What we need to do is, we know the opposite side and the adjacent side. Therefore, we can always find tan theta. So, tan theta is equal to therefore, we have tan theta equal to b upon a, b upon a and theta is acute. So, it will be always positive, right? So, from this we get theta equal to tan inverse b by a, tan inverse b by a. A. So, this is the argument of the complex number A plus IB when it lies in the first quadrant. What about if it lies in the second, third or fourth? So, we shall discuss each one of the cases when Z lies in the second quadrant. So, if it lies in the second quadrant, so this is the point P say, then what form will it take? In the second quadrant, see this is the real 
imaginary and the origin right now in the second quadrant the real part is negative and the imaginary part is positive therefore z is of the form negative a plus ib now the rest of thing what we need to do we have to first join op that is draw the radius vector then draw a perpendicular from p to the real axis call this as a then write the values for this perpendicular so this is a and this is b and this is r and locate the acute angle this is the acute angle and call this acute angle as alpha instead of theta i am calling it as alpha the reason the theta is the argument theta is reserved for argument okay now what is theta it is the angle made by this radius vector with the real axis in the positive direction so this angle so this angle is theta in this case okay therefore if theta is this angle we can find alpha with this so what is alpha alpha is you see we have tan alpha equal to b by a and now it makes sense if we use the absolute value right because a and b here they are negative positive so that's the reason we use this because alpha is acute angle and tan of the acute angle is positive from this we get alpha equal to tan inverse or arc tan b by a so once you find alpha therefore theta will be equal to pi minus this alpha so theta is pi minus alpha and alpha is tan inverse b by a right therefore if the complex number lies in the second quadrant the argument of this complex number is equal to theta and this is given by pi minus alpha where alpha is tan inverse b by a now let us discuss the case when it lies in the third quadrant so this is the third quadrant we have and let us uh, come on write this real axis imaginary axis the origin and this is the point p now how does the, the complex number z look like in this third quadrant both are negative the real as well as the imaginary parts therefore it looks like negative a minus ib both are negative so now let us draw the radius vector op and from p draw the perpendicular to the real axis and let us name again so this is named as a this is small a oa denotes and ap denotes small b i think i will put this o this is a slight hindrance therefore i want to write this above it doesn't matter wherever i write this is the point to write origin okay okay now a b p we have therefore now and this is the acute angle alpha as discussed earlier tan alpha is equal to b by a right or alpha equal to tan inverse b by a fine now what is the argument the argument will be the angle made by this line op with the real axis therefore but we are right drawing below the real axis so the direction is this side so this is theta okay but theta is equal to pi minus this acute angle so it is pi minus alpha but wait this is not a right thing theta is equal to pi minus alpha is absolutely wrong then what is right the right thing is this angle if you see is measured in the opposite sense it is measured in the negative direction of real axis therefore we need to attach a negative sign therefore the argument z is equal to negative pi minus alpha where alpha is tan inverse by a now we shall discuss the last case 